Hey it's me welcome back to yet another video so those of you who don't know i watch a lot of seasonal anime and what better method than a youtube video to talk about all of them i'll be ranking shows from winter 2022 worst to best shows like ranking of kings which started in fall aren't counted but demon slayer entertainment district arc is as the main bulk of it released in the winter season i have watched 19 shows from this season and have dropped one show I'll talk very little about the ones ranked lower here as there are a lot of shows to get through and yes I am considering new seasons of existing shows as well. Yes they kind of have an unfair advantage you may say but they also have to live up to the standards its previous seasons set. Hopefully you'll come out of this video with some new shows that may have went under your radar. This is the worst show of the season for me. It's not the premise that I mind but how seriously the show takes itself and how much it tries to be what it's not and what it can't be. Also the protagonist is a complete wuss which don't get me wrong isn't generally a bad thing but with a premise like this it's a no go finishing this was quite a struggle to be honest This one follows a very general find a certain type of an evil existence and kill slash purify them formula kind of like demon slayer without the demons or the animation Mediocre production wise, terrible plot and character wise and a massive morality issue in the very first episode that never properly got addressed. If you have seen the show you know what I'm talking about. Overall not a very good show. Break up my A battle shonen I feel this is extremely slow paced next to nothing happens and they throw random plot points in your face with no cohesiveness to it plus it's very generic the production is very unimpressive as well Speaking of generic, nailing the generic power fantasy down to the last cell, this show just ticks all the boxes. Bland, overpowered protagonist with that same damn character design, characters around him being surprised at everything he does, female harem of sorts, generic magic-based power system. Eh, at least it's kind of entertaining, not for the reason why it'd like to be entertaining for though. <laughs> This had an interesting premise, had a bit of a promise, but it really messed it up. This show doesn't know what to do with its tone, whether it's a dark comedy or a serious thriller. This show has no clue. That coupled with the lackluster production and lackluster characters riding off cheap shock factor, this was quite dull and boring. <laughs> Now this one is kind of unfair as it's a special episode and not a whole series but it did its job. It was kind of fun. It gave a little bit of extra information about the main series. It's literally called the Reminiscence Arc so that's a given. Not much else to say about this. It was fun. So quite a bit of hype around this and I'm unclear as to why. Yeah, this is a decent bit better than the first season but the first season was god awful so that's really not saying much. There's at least some attempt at cohesiveness although to little success. That terrible CGI is less to be seen and overall animation has improved a fair bit as well so that's a good thing. Much else remains the same as the first season though. A workplace comedy with some amount of absurdity in the form of the setting for the story. It's fun. Most of the comedy lands. The show is somewhat similar to that Combatants will be dispatched show from winter last year. but the comedy is a bit more sophisticated and has less profanity to it some of the humor is probably a bit more ingrained into japanese pop culture i'd guess now look i like the first core and this is a bit of a step down mostly because the semi unique premise that it had has run its course also the politics feel a bit predictable now so i hope it does something a bit more out there and new if we get a new installment from this franchise also the fact that another unrelated show with the literal same premise is running in this very season just 3 to 4 days apart doesn't help i don't know how that's a real thing but i still enjoyed this one This is the show with the same premise. It's like the previous show but a bit more quirky and relies a bit more on the comedic side of things. But I do like it. The protagonist is a goofball, the atmosphere is fun. There are a few production related issues with this. Some of the CGI looks off. The series didn't have a proper opening sequence for a few episodes and only had clips from the show being used which are completely off sync with the music. But I do appreciate the CGI chess pieces they use as a stand in for the actual armies. A show you may not know called Lord Marksman and Vanity did the same thing and I appreciated that as well. I'd much rather look at this instead of another terrible 3D rendered army. Winland has already scarred me for life in that aspect. A fun show overall.
Now look, I've never been very fond of the series, not a big fan of the fan service that is aimed at a female audience for obvious reasons. Also, I'm generally not fond of the vampire trope, but this score had some really impressive visuals and atmosphere, with a very surreal sounding soundtrack which complemented it well. I largely appreciate this show because of its production quality and not much because of its plot or characters or whatever. That problem still remains. Also, the story is slowly getting more and more convoluted in my opinion. Or it may just be me not caring too much about the plot to begin with. Here's a fun fact, I'm a massive slice of life fan and this just ticks all the boxes. An adorable cast of characters, a relatively unique gimmick and a ridiculous amount of feel-good moments. This show is also fairly impressive visually speaking. It did tack on that kind of weird, almost Domecano type of a premise regarding the parents which to me still seems somewhat unnecessary. You could accomplish everything you wanted just as well without that plot point being in the mix but hey, it's not that big of a deal. A very fun show, definitely recommend it if you're looking for something that's a bit laid back. A unique one made by a new studio and directed by someone with one hell of a resume, this is a pretty crazy show. Like, literally, pretty crazy. With a lot of extremely weird and surreal visuals, even a very bizarre plot. This show handles a variety of atmospheres quite well with some gorgeous scenery shots which are a treat to look at. Overall, yeah, this lacks a bit in the characters and plot department but I imagine one of the main things this series tries to get across is the atmosphere and aesthetic, which it does perfectly. The soundtrack is a jam as well. One of the three damn shows Cloverworks is making this season, much like the previous winter where they also made three shows, this one is the weakest of the three in my opinion. Still very fun to watch, a very adorable and wholesome cast with some nifty fan service here and there. The core concept of following your passion could definitely be focused on a bit more, but I don't mind. Visually it's quite impressive, that one beach scene was so well done. I love this show, I love shows in this vein in general and this has an added tone of realism by anime standards when it comes to characters and character interactions. Definitely recommend this one. Yet another Cloverworks show, this one is a sci-fi and it definitely got the shortest end of the stick when it comes to visuals. There are some terrifying stories about the making of this show with the director having a full-blown breakdown on Twitter and an animator even getting hospitalized due to overwork. I can't 100% comment on how accurate this is but I'll link a video and a forum down below which discusses this and leave the final judgement up to you. The show itself though is promising, set in an almost psychopath like pseudo-utopian society while still retaining its rustic vibe. The three main atmospheres are widely different and each are executed really well. The grimy shanty town, the rustic main city and the futuristic locations at various points. The mystery and stakes are definitely fleshed out. Encourage all to give it a look even though visually it looks like it can all fall apart at any moment. Madhouse is really making a reputation of these nifty, somewhat underrated comedy shows. They made Vampire Dies in No Time last fall which is one of my favourite shows not just of that season but all of 2021. This is almost as good, with a more realistic tone, following police women and giving what I'd assume to be an accurate representation of what it's like to be a police in Japan, especially considering the mangaka herself served the police force for over a decade. It showcases the ups and downs with a very solid tone of comedy while simultaneously making you think how hard the police force works and how much we take them for granted. A very fun show, very enjoyable. I definitely recommend you people to give it a go. Now I have talked about this in my previous video about Demon Slayer, check that out if you haven't already. And I still am of the same opinion, the setup is getting old, the visuals reached a whole new level, you foot a bill to an arc otherwise mediocre in the manga and elevated to top 3 shows of the season standards. The fights were top tier, the atmosphere was nice, the hype moments were just that and it left me wanting to see what comes next. While the manga for the same arc reduced my enthusiasm to the point where I didn't exactly care about what happened after this point and dropped it. So, uh, this Yifotable anime, it's not bad. <laughs> The final Cloverworks show, also the best visually as well as overall in my opinion. Now trigger warning, this one is a bit suspect and weird at times especially considering the age of the characters involved. But that's only for a very few number of episodes and isn't anything outrageous, uh, unlike certain shows. Just a bit weird. Those things aside, it's an adorable show with a very feel good atmosphere and it's wholesome beyond measure. Also the award for the cutest sister goes to Kao. She's so adorable, man. Also, goddamn, this show is beautiful to look at. Cloverworks really snapped here. I just love this show, it's so entertaining. Well, 
its attack on Titan and its adapting what many consider to be the best arc in the series and for good reason. I have talked in detail about the production quality in my video about MAPPA and attack on Titan, again check it out if you haven't. But to sum it up, the production still has some issues but it's massively improved from the first core. A lot more innovative with the visuals as well. This core of features arguably the biggest plot twist of the series and completely changes the conflict and tone yet again. What is this, the third time now? I have read the entire manga so I know where this goes and I'm quite looking forward to it as well as the reaction of the anime only people. So that was it. It was a surprisingly strong season, much like the previous winter last year. A lot of enjoyable shows, a lot of high production value shows and just one or two series that were proper bad. Quite enjoyed nearly every anime I watched this time around. Hope you liked the video, I'll probably do similar videos after every season ends. This is something I generally do in the form of story highlights on my Instagram. Follow me there by the way. But I may transition to YouTube for it now. Like the video, leave a comment, subscribe and until next time.